Ichiban Boshi arrives in town and happens to see three men bullying an old man. He stops them and introduces himself as the samurai killer. He started fighting them and was able to take down some of them, but suddenly some soldiers came to arrest him. He is then prepared for execution, but to his surprise, he is taken elsewhere. Ichiban Boshi is then lined up with other criminals who are also expected to be killed and wonder where are they. The man standing in front of them introduces himself as the 8th unit captain of the Shinshan Gumi, Heisuke Todo. Heisuke explains that on the 18th of August, the government changed. Someone assassinated Isami Kondo and the other Shinshan Gumi commanders, leaving a seriously injured Heisuke as the only survivor. As spoken, the substitute criminals will die as the new leaders of the Shinshan Gumi and live or die if they refuse. Thus, the following commences. Sakuya as Hichikata Toshizo, for it fits his job description as a hitman. Bo as Harada Sanosuke, for all the food they can serve. Gietaro as Nagakura Shinpachi, for still having much to enjoy the finest things in life, liquor, women, and gambling. An unarmed criminal refused Heisuke's offer and was immediately killed by Sakuya. Sogen as Sanan Keisuke, for he can have access to dissect corpses while treating the injured as a doctor. Suzuran as Saito Hajime, for being able to practice his religion for the dead. Akira as Okito Soji, for the Shinsen Gumi is a total meritocracy, where her gender is accepted while cross-dressing to test herself against men. This leaves only Ichiban Boshi, who strongly refuses to become a samurai after one wearing a faceless mask killed his family. Heisuke reveals that the samurai is the same culprit behind the killing of the Shinshan Gumi leaders, who belongs to an organization known as the Mass Demons. This means they have a common enemy. Ichiban Boshi immediately agrees to join the Shinshan Gumi as Kondo Isami. The next day, Heisuke reports to Katamori that the substitutes joined the Shinshan Gumi. Katamori tells Heisuke that he doesn't expect much from the criminals, but they just need to maintain enough influence to scare the forces attempting to overthrow the shogunate. He then tells him about the ronin wandering around Shimabara and Gion. Heisuke tells him he will take care of him. Meanwhile, Akira decided to start training the men. Akira asks the new members who knows swordsmanship, but except for Sakuya, the rest prefer guns, raw power, bombs, or even peace. However, as swordsmanship is needed, Akira decides to start with Ichiban Boshi. Akira and Ichiban Boshi face each other for a match, but Ichiban Boshi throws away his wooden sword, saying that he doesn't need it, and attacks her with kicks. Heisuke returns to see Akira and Ichiban Boshi fighting but stops them. He hits Ichiban Boshi and gives him his wooden sword, advising him that the sword is the samurai's soul and he can't just throw his soul on the ground. Heisuke tells him they won't be fighting opponents who can be defeated with kicks, and Ichiban Boshi agrees to learn swordsmanship. Heisuke gives them their first job, explaining they will be patrolling the city and take care of some business. Heisuke decided that they will split into three groups, focused around those with combat experience. Heisuke, Gyataro, and Bo will head to Gion. Akira, Suzuran, and Sogen will go to Karasuma. Ichiban Boshi and Sakuya are the only two left. Heisuke also tells the rest to avoid combat as they aren't skilled enough. Elsewhere, a blonde man decides to give a new sword to a ronin. While Ichiban Boshi and Sakuya were on patrol, they saw a ronin attacking someone. Ichiban Boshi rushes to kick the ronin. The ronin attacks back with air blade and runs away. Ichiban Boshi immediately chases the ronin. When he caught up with the ronin and saw that the ronin was about to kill a family, Ichiban Boshi accidentally activates the power of the Kondo leader and rushes to attack him. Ichiban Boshi cuts off the Ronin's sword and masks to rescue him. The family asks him who he is, and Ichiban Boshi introduces himself as the commander of the Shinshan Gumi, Isami Kondo. Heisuke thinks the real commander Kondo granted Ichiban Boshi his strength because the swords contained the souls of the Shinshan Gumi leaders. The next morning, the Shinshan Gumi were assigned to escort Sozan, who is said to have the greatest intellect in Japan. Sozan seeing these young people was quite disappointed. He looked at Sakuya and felt like he'd seen him before. Along the way, Sozan shows them his invention, a sun-resistant glass. It can help the wearer not be dazzled. On the way, they were ambushed by rebels against the Shogunate. While Sozan is protected by Sakuya, he realizes that Sakuya's fighting style is not that of a samurai. While fighting, Suzuran accidentally broke the sword of the previous leader, shocking Heisuke. Each of them fights in their own way, 
After defeating the rebels, Sozan realizes that each of them has their own talents, but doesn't know how to work together. Suddenly, Sozan remembers that Sakuya was the one who tried to assassinate him. Ichiban Boshi tells Sozan that Sakuya is not a bad guy. They're all damaged goods with Dark Past. If Sozan investigate this, all information would be revealed. Fortunately, Sozan doesn't care about their dark past, as long as they're good people now. He will not pursue their past sins. They continue on their way to Kobe Port Naval Training Center. Those are American-made steamships. Japan is rather far behind, technologically speaking. Japan will fail if they don't fight, but they don't have the slightest desire to destroy Japan. What they want is money, unequal trades and reparations. They will squeeze everything they can out of them. There is a way to prevent this. Japan must be united as one. Along the way, Sozan finds Ichiban Boshi very interesting after learning that his dream is to change the world. Sozan wants to introduce Ichiban Boshi to Sakamoto, who also has the desire to change the world. They then stop at a small inn. Sozan seems unhappy with the facilities there. While everyone is resting, Ichiban Boshi goes out to practice swordsmanship. While everyone is sleeping, Sakuya is woken up by someone's noise. He realizes it is the signal of his assassin organization. His teammates question him as to why he didn't kill Sozan. Sakuya says that he has died and was reborn as Hijikata Toshizo, so he won't follow any orders from the organization anymore. The masked man attacks Sakuya because traitors are not allowed to live. The man is holding a sword with purple light. It is extremely sharp and can cut through anything. At this time, Ichiban Boshi comes to this place and accidentally learns that Sakuya had once killed his own father, shocking Ichiban Boshi. The man rushes to attack Ichiban Boshi and says that this sword goes beyond a novice. Sakuya rushes to stab the man from behind. Then Sakuya also admits what the man said was true and returned to the inn. The next morning, Lord Katamori comes to Heisuke's place to give him a mission to find a man named Katsura, who was said to have had some vicious plots. Heisuke informs his team of the mission to capture Katsura. They will patrol the area around the residence of Choshu Domain. Ichiban Boshi and Akira disguise themselves as staff of the Yoshidaya house. The rest of them follow Heisuke to investigate the town. After a few hours of tiring work, Ichiban Boshi and Akira still haven't found any information about Katsura. Akira approaches a room to eavesdrop, but is discovered. They think Akira is a secret agent and intend to kill her. Luckily, a woman named Ikuchiro drags Akira inside and tells her that she is a staff of this place. They call the man in the blue shirt Katsura. At this time, Sakuya discovers that a man has been following him. He rushes to hold the man and tortures him, causing him to confess that he was the one who spread the fake rumor that Katsura was staying at Yoshidaya house. After eating and drinking, Katsura stands up and orders to kill all members of the Yoshidaya house. They are here to hunt out the spies of the Sabaku group. For that reason, they have been spreading the rumor that Katsura appeared for quite a few days. Akira steps up and confesses that she herself is a spy. She asks them to release the unrelated people, but Katsura still orders his subordinates to kill everyone here. But fortunately, Ichiban Boshi evacuate them. Katsura is angry and is about to kill Ichiban Boshi and Akira. Fortunately, their team arrived in time to rescue them. Ichiban Boshi and Akira get their swords back. Ikuchiro also attacks Katsura. A chaotic battle between the two factions take place here. Ichiban Boshi doesn't seem to have an advantage in tight spaces. Fortunately, Sakuya comes to rescue him. By this time, Ikuchiro and Akira have also finished dealing with Katsura's subordinates. Ikuchiro then takes one of Akira's brooches and leaves. Katsura rushes in and attacks Akira. He despises Akira as a woman wielding a sword. Akira says that she exists to kill jerks like him. Akira's will activates the power of the sword. She easily kills Katsura with a single slash. However, Akira tells them that this man is not Katsura. He is just a political decoy for spy hunting. It turns out that Katsura is actually Ikuchiro. He helped Akira's team because he wanted to punish the man who impersonated him. While everyone is sleeping, four Joshu spies are about to kill Gyataro and Bo. Fortunately, their weapons awaken them. The remaining members hear the sound of fighting in the next room. They quickly reach Bo in Kietaro's place. One of them is knocked down by Akira. The remaining guys run away. The next morning, Sakuya brings the tools used to torture the spy. But Ichiban Boshi stops him because he thinks Sakuya will kill the spy just like Sakuya killed his own father. 
When the spy learns that Sakuya killed his own father, the spy panics and reveals all the information he knows. At this time, Heisuke brings the spy's sword to report to Lord Katamori. He says that most of the wandering samurai have swords like this. The spy said that he got his sword from a kid, so they will start investigating at the orphanage. Luckily, Gyatarou was the leader of the orphan gang, so finding that kid is quite easy. They found out who was bribing these kids to give the swords to the wandering samurais. They arrest the people who gave the money to the child and force them to disclose information. They say that the masked demons are gathering demonic swords. The Shinshan Gumi begin to divide the groups into actions. Ichiban Boshi's group quickly found out where they traded their swords. The three masked men want to kill the boy to rob the swords, but they are stopped by Ichiban Boshi's group. One of them holds the boy hostage, angering Gyatero and Bo. Their sword suddenly activates their power and they team up to rescue the boy. The two masked men throw their swords to their leader, who was called Rashomaru. Ichiban Boshi chases after Rashomaru. While giving chase, Ichiban Boshi realizes that the sword Rashomaru is wearing on his back resembles the sword of the man who killed Ichiban Boshi's entire family. Ichiban Boshi successfully knocks off the man's mask, but the one standing in front of him is his own younger brother, Sukito. His younger brother is still alive, but now he is the captain of the masked demons, Rashomaru. Sadly, I have to end this recap here. As always, the name of this anime will be in the comments. I would recommend you guys to give this series a try, or if not, then please show this video some love and I'll make a part 2 as soon as possible. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up if you did, subscribe for more anime recaps, and ring that bell icon to be notified of new uploads. See you all next time.